They say a man's best friend is his dog. For a girl, it's a diamond. It smells better, lasts longer and doesn't chew your slippers. Given how hard it is to find and mine diamonds, it's no surprise they cost a fortune. But it seems we may not be mining diamonds for much longer, because now they've found a way to grow them in a laboratory. Florida, USA. Famous for palm trees, luxury retirement homes and those great Fred Astaire Art Deco buildings. But few people realize that it's now also one of the world's diamond capitals. That's because out in Sarasota, a company called Gemesis has come up with a way to artificially produce these rare stones. It looks like something out of Alien. There are very few people here, just row upon row of machines that look like growth chambers. In fact, they are growth chambers, but they're not gestating giant alien bugs. These machines are busy making diamonds. Every day on this high-tech production line, it's down to Chris Owens to oversee the sowing and harvesting of up to 40 rare gems. Every day is a new battle, you know, every day is learning something new. In nature, a diamond is formed when, say, a tree is fried in a volcano and then crushed beneath the Earth's crust for several millions of years. In here, the process begins when Chris loads the machine with what he calls a seed. The seed is actually itself a tiny diamond, and it's placed in a capsule containing graphite. The idea is to melt this graphite at 1500 degrees centigrade and cause it to reform on the surface of the diamond seed. To imitate the force of a mountain, they need to generate more than 58,000 times normal atmospheric pressure. To do this, they use six chunks of alloy called anvils, which form a tight-fitting cocoon around the graphite. The cocoon is then sealed with eight steel wedges. It's just like taking a mountain and setting on top of it. Immense amount of pressure, immense amount of heat. The design of this growth chamber has taken 50 years to perfect. In the early days, it was hard to create enough pressure and the machines had a habit of blowing up. These days, the units are closed with a hydraulic ram before massive steel lock rings seal the machine shut. As the pressure and temperature builds up inside, the graphite begins to melt, turning it into a superheated liquid. Carbon atoms then begin to attach themselves to the diamond seed, gradually building up on its surface, layer by layer. It's a slow process. It's also hit and miss. Not every seed will turn into a proper diamond. One thing missed and we have no diamond. And the machine will run just the same for four days. We'll unload it, empty, nothing. Four days later, it's harvest time and Chris carefully opens each machine. To find out whether it's worked, they need to remove the casing. First, the outer ceramic layer is simply broken away with a gentle tap from a hammer. But the inner metal casing needs to be removed more carefully, so it's added to a flask of hydrochloric acid, which dissolves the metal. After five hours in the acid, the metal capsule has been eaten away. This one is a success. In only four days, the graphite has been transformed into a diamond. Gemesis specialize in producing yellow diamonds, which are highly valued on the market. Each one is carefully weighed, checked for flaws and clarity, and added to the pile, which is shipped every week to New York. Every year, billions of dollars worth of diamonds arrive here in Manhattan to be cut, graded and sold. But cutting a diamond is no easy task. It is, after all, the single hardest natural substance there is. So, to cut a diamond, you need a diamond. This time in the form of a powder, which is used to coat these turntables. It's a highly skilled job 
And here at Salora, they spend days working on each stone. They want to produce a symmetrical stone, but they don't want to cut too much away, and they can't cut against the grain. So each diamond has to be cut into a slightly different shape. Once the diamond cutters have finished their work, all that remains is for the diamond to be certified. That happens here at the International Gemological Institute. Gemesis diamonds are just as real as the ones that form naturally under volcanoes. To tell the difference, you need an expert like David Weistein and a powerful binocular microscope. So how does he tell them apart? The color in this stone, uh, being a very intense orange, tells me that this is likely to be a laboratory-grown stone and the microscope allows me to see the microscopic characteristics inside that help me identify it. To confirm their origin, all lab-grown diamonds over one quarter carat are finally etched with a laser. And with this little bit of handiwork complete, the finished stone is ready to burn a hole in the pocket of some guy and to decorate the finger of some doll. But what takes nature several million years now takes modern science just four days. So these man-made diamonds cost around a quarter the price of the regular kind. Not that there's any need to tell your special lady that.